Returning to the Caribbean after living in Europe was enriching and surprising. I know now that I never wanted to leave 12 years ago. My sister's tragedy forced me to leave. Strange to return to research a film about Caribbean art and leave again with so many new ways of seeing and a script for a film that may never be done. Songs of the shapeshifters, so many ideas to remember. Because I work so much in imagination, I, I only need to see something, it's a fleeting glance, a fraction of a second, and it, it registers on my mind. The plane began to land. I felt that I was going back into myself. I knew that when I saw Ossie's sculpture, Birth, that I would have to talk with him, one of the original people. Where was the visual imagination coming from, for his work as well as the other Indian artists? I, yeah, I found out my mother came from the cave, from the cave in the mountains. And before you can get there, you have to go and get, you have to pass under a drizzle of water into the cave to get to your parents' um, uh, knowledge. I knew what Ossie told me was a riddle. For me it was not my parents, but the memory of Emily I was looking for. My research for the art film linked to this. I knew my old teacher and artist, Stanley Greaves, could guide me. Strange that before going to Stanley I had that lifelike dream. Walking up a red road to a house in the rainforest. The door opens for me, but no one was there. One has a sense, at least I have a sense, of, of life in the Caribbean as kind of uh, living in some kind of hiatus of history where uh, not, we're not seeing very much uh, a real change. I'm not talking about material change, that you're changing from donkey carts to Suzuki's or um, vans or motorcycles. I am talking about, about real change in, in the way in which we, 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 um, we administer what we have around us and in which we relate to what we have around us. Uh, how do we relate to the land and to the sea, and to the wind, and to the rocks, and to the water, the trees, and the things that we grow for food? Um, I, I do not find a, a philosophy that embraces all of these things, and that to me is, is, is very distressing. My feeling is that um, one of the ways in which to investigate the environment in which we live is to investigate the objects we find there. And um, I am discovering two uh, um, very definite order, orders of, of, of objects, uh, the man-made and the natural. Um, I, I don't think we ourselves can, can really come to any kind of understanding of the environment unless we regard ourselves as objects indeed uh, within the, the environment um, that contains these other kinds of, um, kinds of objects. And I find that um, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing to understand what a thing is, what, what exactly is a needle or what exactly is an egg. Uh, but perhaps by placing these two things in conjunction in, in one situation, uh, one may begin to, uh, through the relationship developing between the two, uh, come to understand a little about what is a needle and what is an egg. Uh, uh, these are investigations I feel which to my mind, will lead, will lead me, perhaps, um, hopefully, uh, to discover or to find, find out a bit more about the workings of, of, the, of the Caribbean mind, uh, the, the Caribbean psyche. Uh, uh, psyche. Wait, 
Certainly for me, a highlight in my research and journey for the film was my first visit to Cuba. I had always wanted to go there, and the fact that Roberto was there made it even more fulfilling. Transplanted from home, he was after 12 years, well integrated into Cuba's achievements, struggles and sorrows. At home I had no real understanding of his revolutionary ideas on politics and culture. I was too young. But Emily was one of Roberto's best friends. I think they were in love, and now that I think about it, Roberto left Guyana about the same time as me, several months after Emily's murder. When we first met, there was the usual exchange. How are you? So what has happened with you? As neither of us could answer that in a few sentences, we laughed and talked about the present, the research and the film I wanted to make. I told him I needed financial support, that it was difficult to sell such a film in Europe. He believed the film would be most important for the Caribbean, so it must get support. He could arrange it, so I should just keep going on. I started to tell him about my discussions with artists, how I was interested in each artist's idea about their visual imagination. That was the red thread for the film. Also, how my own imagination was being sensitized by the art and the environment. What I'm trying to get to is, is um, I'm, i got a deep concern now with the cross-reference of image, idea, word, and color. You know, and I'm trying to make the, this composite image of all these elements and aspects of the Caribbean world. You know, and I'm trying to find some way to make some kind of sense and balance out of this confusion. What am I in the 20th century? I'm an Indian living in the 20th century, nearing the 21st century, and I'm skeptical. I have, um, I've been influenced by Europe. I'm part of the European tradition as well. I'm skeptical, I tend to view life in an em empirical way. I decided that seeing that I had uh, Amerindian ancestry, that I would use these roots for my inspiration because it was there all the time. And so I started researching um, Amerindian pottery, uh, wherever I could find it, looking at their shapes, going into their homes, seeing what they used for cooking, what they used for drink jars, what they used for, for everything. A, a, a painting is like a, a, a gauge of my life. Like, if things don't go good, I start to question my life serious. If my paintings don't go well, I start to question my personal life and start to analyze myself internally. Because I think, it, it, you know, it's like a reference or reference points to my internal thinking and also my um, thinking towards society and towards life and death and things that really affect humanity because it, one, of the most, one of the most things that is really um, vivid is the, the con contrast because I find out that contrast bears a lot of tension because the contrast between life and death is, is amazed me a lot. Rasish's paintings and ideas connected to the streams my own thoughts were running in. His internal thinking, the contrast between life and death. I was rejoining my past life and what happened to Emily. In his paintings, I could suddenly see her, her body. Found in the early morning, broken and stretched out on the Georgetown seawall. How was she murdered and why? There seemed to be so many stories. 